Vodafone cares about you and your health. HealthFest has gone from strength to strength. It gives hope to many Ghanaians across the nation with its free medical assessment and care. The Medical Call Center 255 continues to empower Ghanaians with our unique phone-in medical consultancy. But it all started here on your TV screen with the award-winning program Healthline. This week on Healthline, our doctors talk about allergies. In the field, we meet Abigail, who is still battling with an injury that happened 15 years ago. Welcome to Vodafone Healthline, where we answer all your health concerns. I'm Ruth. Say hi to your doctors. Hi, I'm Papani. Hello, I'm Lorraine. Hello, I'm Bright. Get your questions ready. Health Cam is on the street. Midin the flooring, no you be a missia at the pump. But normally no, say in crawfu the nyama bar instead of say a chow or mo bag in the muntino. Since a gym munti say ya cut and now say a be pamwa. Na ye in heli sa sent na a my katan to me per se mi mu um solution. Okay now kata is a very commonly used term and I just want to explain exactly what's happening. So I have a head over here. I'm going to be very mean and split it up and then I want to show you something. I just need this part. Now, whenever you're breathing in your nose, right down into your throat and then down, there's, if you see this red part, this is what we call the inner lining of your nasal passage. Now there's usually a thin membrane, like a, a, um, a see-through polythene bag, that's how it looks. And this lines all through here. Now what it does is that it serves as a form of humidification. So it helps when you're breathing in the dry air, it wets it up so that it doesn't burn your throat and your nose. And then it also acts as a form of filter to trap dust and any unwanted particles from the air that you're breathing in. This membrane naturally produces secretions just to keep it moist. But when you have Qatar, what happens is that there's an excessive production of this fluid. It's a natural clear fluid. That's why when you have Qatar, you may have a symptom of a runny nose because the fluid that is in usually in normal proportions is being produced so much. You may have other associated symptoms like a blocked nose, a headache. You may have some ringing sensation in your ears because the membrane is also all through your ear, inner parts that you don't see. There are many causes of Qatar. Sometimes it's something you're allergic to. There's a trigger, maybe a smell, maybe um, a dusty particle, which is so in your case. But then some people may also have um, a chest infection or any infection of the nasal passage, and this would cause catar. So in your case, it's because of the fabric, and this is why you are getting catar. So we have a call from Abisat in Adidome. Hello, Abisat. Hello, doctors. My dad said he had asthma as a child, but somehow he doesn't have it now. I find that sometimes I have difficulty in breathing. Could it be that I have asthma as well? Asthma in this case, more or less, can actually be transmitted through your genes. So once you have it in your family, like he says, you could come down with asthma. Now I'm sure you're worried because as a child, you didn't have asthma. The thing is, in some people, they actually have asthma as children. And then as they grow up, it goes away. In others, it actually triggers after you're an adult. So something you're exposed to as an adult actually triggers the asthma attack now. And then you end up having symptoms of asthma. The good thing about asthma is that it's treatable. Once you have the condition, go see your doctor. There are different medications that they will use. But even before then, the doctor would want to prove that yes, indeed, you have asthma. So he will want to run a couple of tests. They might do a chest X-ray on you and something very important called a lung function test. Once you have asthma, you have problems with how you breathe. 
you're able to put in a bit of air, but the air can't come out. So suddenly your ability to exhale is not as good as your ability to inhale. So these function tests would actually assess and see whether you are able to breathe in and out normally and be able to assess the severity of the asthma that you have. The medications that will be given to you as well are relatively easy to use and things that you should find easy to use virtually every day of your life or as and when you have uh, an asthma attack. In some events, your attacks may be a little too strong for the medications that you take. So I would advise that once you start noticing that you're having extreme difficulty breathing and the medications you're on are not working, rush to the hospital as soon as possible because that could end up saving your life. Accidents happen. Be prepared for an emergency. Let iRED show you how. Hey, today we've eaten pow. <laughs> What's wrong, Aku? It must be the kebab I ate at the beach. <laughs> no, I'm not a doctor, but with first aid, I can help. First aid for food poisoning. Lay the patient down to rest. Avoid moving them around. Give them a bowl in case of vomiting. Encourage the patient to take small sips of water at a regular interval. Do not give the patient heavy food, milk, or caffeine. If vomiting is prolonged or the patient is complaining of severe belly pain, rush the patient to the hospital. So you see, it's not really rocket science now, is it? Vodafone, power to you. Welcome back to the show. Time to catch up with the street doctor. A lot of people have allergies all the time, but there are things you can do in your home to prevent these reactions from coming about. Let's go see what they are. So today we're in a typical room where we're going to look at things that you could do to prevent you from triggering your allergic reactions. We'll be looking at the floors, the windows, the curtains, and the bed. When it comes to the floor, preferably use uh, tiles or some kind of hard floor. It makes it easy to sweep and to mop. However, if you want to use a carpet, make sure you use one that has a low pile setting, something you can easily sweep or vacuum, and you can easily wash when you want to. You don't want too much dust being trapped in the carpet. So let's talk about windows. You want to make sure your windows are clean all the time. So again, try and make sure you clean them once a week. You don't want a lot of dust and dirt forming, as you can see over here. Make sure you wipe the edges and all the corners to prevent mold from gathering up. So remember, the dust in the windows can affect your allergies, so remember to keep them clean. When it gets to the curtains, make sure you use curtains that are easy to wash, that allow a lot of ventilation in, and they don't trap too much dust. So when it comes to the bed, you're looking at preventing dust and dust mites. So like I said, make sure you wash your sheets weekly, make sure you keep them clean. We don't want stains and grease and oil, because these will actually trap some of these allergens. So again, keep them clean all the time, and make sure that you use soap that you don't react to. For those of you who use mosquito nets as well, make sure you wash them at the regular recommended intervals. In between, try and keep them as clean as possible, tuck them away when you're not using them, and only use them to cover the bed when there's somebody in the bed. If you have pets, I would advise you to try and keep your pets away from the bedroom especially. Some of your friends and some family members may react to the pets, so keep them away from these family members if you can, Feed them outside and keep them in secure places. For those of you who love pets and you can still hang around them, please feel free to hang around them. These are some of the things you could do to help prevent yourself from triggering your allergic reactions. Till next time on Street Doctor, take care. Do you want to have a happy, healthy baby? Join us on Kids Corner. Today we talk about constipation in babies. Now, constipation generally just means uh, inability to pass feces uh, compared to your normal routine. Uh, with babies, the thing you have to notice is that it's different. Not every baby will respond the same way to bowel movements as every other baby. And even in families, what your first child may have a totally different bowel routine than your second born or your third born. So the thing is that Remember that once you have a child who you think is constipated, you have to do it with reference to what his or her normal cycles are. But also remember that as the child grows, 
depending on what you feed the child, the cycles also change. So for example, a child who's breastfed will have totally different bowel movements than a child who's on formula. One of the things you can look out for if your child has not passed through for a very long period of time, if they are not constipated, when they do pass through, the stool should still be soft and of normal consistency. If at the time they finally pass through is rock solid and stony hard, then you should know something is going on. For a lot of parents, they are tempted to, you know, at that moment get some enema. It's not the best thing because you can actually cause what we call intussusception. You can actually push the bowel of a child to telescope into another part and that can cause a lot of problems. In extreme situations, a doctor would prescribe something we call glycerin suppository. We put it over there and most children after that will be able to go. But other than that, don't take it into your hands because if you keep using glycerin suppository, some children will never be able to go without it and then they become chronically constipated. When your child gets above the age of six months, it's essential that as you're introducing supplementary feeds, you give them food that is high in fiber. So like oats and wheat, and this is really high in fiber and it helps give their feces more bulk. And then also in instituting fruits and vegetables into their diet. Every day or every other day, depending on what fruit is in season, maybe puree it for your child. It works wonders and you should never have a child with bowel problems once you do this. It's time to talk myths. Hilda is on the phone from Oda. Hello, Hilda. Hello, doctor. I cared for my own baby after birth. He has a slighted big head and my grandmother blames me because I didn't press his head well to make it a smaller. Can this be true? You cannot do anything to change the size of your child's head, okay? Or the shape. The, the shape, you should not massage it, okay? But to avoid some of these depressions, you have to just position the child properly and you'll be fine. The following segment contains material of an adult nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Time for us to talk about sex. And Ebo sent us this from Winneba. Why do people bite or scratch during sex? My girlfriend likes to do that a lot and prefers that I do it too, but I find it a little weird. Ebo, this is indeed weird for a lot of people, but actually a lot of people do engage in this act. And it's actually apparently linked to the fact that it actually spices up the whole game. More like increases the arousal and and for some people, it's, an, it's a way of showing the other partner that I feel strong for you. But the rule to this apparently is that you should bite, but not bite too hard, because obviously if it's too painful, it just kills the whole game. And if you scratch too hard and your partner starts bleeding, surely it's not going to be really any fun anymore. I think there are certain places that, I mean, if you nibble, it may stimulate some arousal. But bear in mind that some people derive pleasure from being bitten and then so that's the bite -y. oh and then somebody may be the biter and may derive the pleasure so it depends on what is giving you pleasure if you like being bitten then you may want to teach your partner how and where to bite but then if you are forced to bite and you don't want to bite that's where the whole issue of i'm not comfortable with this comes in but i think it's all about communication you know, so that you, 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 you have a consensual, enjoyable act. When you come around, Mousy, a day, the Vafim Vama, that when I would have for every line. Become a letting this young Delantician and Bukuna Yuntipeti, I feel a Sia Remonoku, and my Yobo da for my line. May you add the Moponcula Dokita, Doctor Tonam, New York, Fiamma, and Moe, and Moe Cola. Her only desire is to get up one day, slip her feet into some shoes, and walk. Meet Abigail. I didn't know Abigail. I was in the state Manya in fee twenty eight years. Minya, eh, mammy, or minamina five years. And I mean, my miss, mammy say, Minfabola and Cotuchino, Casuas at Amneti, Casua, or Boom Road. 
Inti mi di bola anu ko tutu ni. Inti mi ko bola anu su ami nam na mi musa mpo bwa anu ba ko ayira. Inti na mi hufye we ni mpo bwa anu sa na mi ni oma shi bola anu su. Inti ni unhu se e jawa si. Inti mi nam sa na mi ko to e janu. When she stepped into ashes, so she sustained burns, resulted in two major problems. One is that she lost part of her toes. What it means is that they became necrotic, or they died and then fell off, either during hospital tr uh, treatment or at home. And then secondly, as the wound healed without skin grafting, without any intervention, the toes are in a position where they are not able to come down naturally, which makes it a condition we we'll call post burns contracture of the toes. In the middle hospital, up to one year. Now, no, 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 I'm a free hospital by and so I'm better than two months to three months. I'm a co screener, I'm a shampoo, I'm a scientist, I'm a real school news. I'm a man to me, I'm a papa. I'm a man to me, 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 i it is a clapper. Me, 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 I am to be scared all the time. My mother is in my trailer. I need to say, she said, baby, I'll see from Pena. I'm going to be abused to me, dear. Who abused to me from oh, sister, sorry, why? Me in a one, eh, just a me dabri, me dabri, and yenti, and a me, my me, Madame Beatrice. By me call market, not or ton ton, and near my. Tiaya, me taiko to be to me, Huna, na a semino, a yamaro. A yamaro. And Tiaya, me, we are Miss Michana, not my baby. And till one day, maybe I don't know, we become a coma semi dua, be Miss Sano, a sem. I have a better dear on me, tea or better dear Miss Anna. Now, me will be a dean coma. The common man will be some Miss Sue. Na I don't mean baby done. Na me see you at his idea, a nomra, na on a man, a meda, na me mentana. Tell frame and not remember her, no, she say, meant to me at an hour. I mean, the hacker crack, she say, Yacupombe, a bed, a bachelor, and genuine. I'll be gay, men in it, no, or pa grow baby. Yet to make an answer, a bronco more essay, omnimweb food. We are not the ISC. I said, my team will point in a day. I can't meet him. Any idea I met me a year movement, and I said, meant to me, you met me as a crack, I yet be beer. But younger than so, my Daniel, I am rough. Me and dinner. I call yes, sir, I didn't know I won my coma so into me. I was so worried, so worried. Because my future and dear man said, without me and I, we ain't ye, and I said, meet me in shame for one. My future is bad. The following scenes contain images that could disturb sensitive viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. After hearing of Abigail's plight, Vodafone stepped in and got Abigail the life-changing surgery she required. Abigail has decided that of the two feet, the right is more troublesome. We are going to make an incision at the appropriate site bring all the tools down to point forwards. And then we are going to use certain instruments or equipment to hold it forward pointing position. Once that is done, 
and we are happy with the new positions that we are going to harvest skin graft. That is where you take part of your skin from one side, move it to another area, and you expect that it will survive in this new area based on blood supply at the new site. Once everything is over, we are going to put some dressings on this, uh, put a POP to support the limbs in that position, some bandaging, and we'll take her to the board and then monitor her. After five days, we'll look at her wounds to see how they are doing. And then after 14 days, we will discharge her. So that will be one side. Then once everything has healed, where we took the skin or harvested the skin has healed and she's comfortable, we'll then plan to bring her back and do the other side. Vodafone would like to thank the staff at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital for all they have done for Abigail. Abigail joins us in the studio today. Abigail, you're welcome. Medo for night to say. Eh, we operations be brainy here and sana onaina ye seni ne te face no kune sen. Bibiya agrees. Bibiya is all right. Inti si se eni da swabe na woma dache. Hmm. Me ho me ho me ho. Eh se me ho me ho. E juma be brain. Me ho me ho. Eni da swabe be ni juma be brain. Na voda fun for se oma ye bi. Omu nye nye ye, omu guso. Anya, sa wu ye nye man keten kiti, ebe susu omu kakra. Inti omu bibi ke tu e bia, omu se, we die, ya de tu un sem kakra na, u die chwa omu kakra. Why? Kwa chwa omu da, vuna fun fwa si bebri. Nanka meni nda, meni nda se bia, misu midi mena ebe shen po bo emu. But enam voda fun fo amu adumunti ama misu enam mi wani daso se ebeya den ya misu mi dimi na ebe shi ampo bama ye juma na ebiya anya mi a family so misu abuwa obi inti mi da voda fun fo asibi. It's the end of another great episode of Healthline. Thank you for sticking with us. Meet us same time next week. And don't forget, every human being is the author of their own well-being. Live wise, goodbye. Vodafone will continue to support this program. If you have been moved by the stories or issues you've seen on Healthline, you can donate one Ghana CD by texting GIVE to 133. Or you can donate by sending your contribution via Vodafone Cash to 835-000. Next week on Vodafone Healthline, our doctors talk about aging. In the field, we catch up with Lydia from season one.